um, I want to uh, do the first topic here. Will Newt back off? Now, he's been getting a ton of pressure. Sununu's out there threatening everybody, saying, ah, oh, you work with Newt. I don't know. You could have trouble on your hands. I don't know if you're ever going to get a job again. Or if you'll get financing, Adelson, who's his main backer. Rush Limbaugh is comparing Rick Perry, who's doing similar attacks to Fidel Castro. So is Newt going to back off? Tina, you start. I hope not. This is like watching a suicide bomber going after something that you really want to see hit. Um, you know, he's blowing everything up. Uh, he's going after uh, Romney for being a capitalist, which is hilarious. Uh, you know, he, he, right after he left the speakership, he went straight into a, a Bain Capital competitor, uh, uh, Fort Smith uh, Little. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he, this guy is like everything that he is guilty of. He likes to go after other people. And now the Republican Party has strangely had to stand up against capitalism. It's fantastic. I hope he I hope he goes all the way. Now, it's said this is really interesting because he, he right now he doesn't seem to be backing down. He said, right. uh, for example, don't talk about who got all the money. Can't we just move forward letting the uh, rich keep all the money? He's saying that's what, Rep you know, Mitt Romney is saying, who is a Republican. He's saying, no, 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 we got to say, hey, where the rich get the money from, etc. I mean, he almost sounds like a progressive. Is he really going to go down this road, or is somebody going to come to him at some point and go, hey, Newt, you remember those great speaking fees you were getting and all that money you were getting for being a historian? Look, that stuff's going to go away if you're not a good guy. Well, I, th I think he's already backed off some of his criticism. I mean, he was already saying, you know, I don't, I'm not going after capitalism, I'm not anti-capitalist. But I think really the wider point here is that the Republican Party, the establishment, doesn't feel the same way that everyday Americans do about big finance. You know, most Americans think that big finance is not that useful to the country. I mean, Mitt Romney was not a brilliant doctor or a brilliant engineer. He raided companies, made gigantic profits, loaded them up with debt, and laid off tens and tens of thousands of people. That's really horrible behavior. That's not the sort of social democratic capitalism that we love. That's sort of a vulture capitalism and big finance capitalism. Um, one of Rick Perry's financiers, a big finance guy in South Carolina, actually switched uh, it switched who he endorsed. He actually endorsed Mitt Romney because he hated so much that Rick Perry was actually talking like an everyday American. And, um, you know, there was a guy from the American Enterprise Institute that wrote that it's actually great what Mitt Romney's doing at Bain, what, what he did at Bain. And he actually said that he wants him to run the USA the same way. The, the, he actually called it, I think, the failing corporation of the USA. But we, you know, everyday Americans, people who didn't grow up you know, privileged and didn't get uh, basically handouts their entire life and raided companies and looted them, everyday Americans know that's not true. I mean, if America was a big corporation, then we'd all get laid off and they'd go and hire Indonesian citizens for $2 an hour. <laughs> and they probably wouldn't give them citizenship either. So, Zach, it seems that Republican politicians are stuck in a rock and a hard place. Right? Right? On the one hand, they've got these huge financiers who say, hey, listen, the whole point of the, the party is to serve me. So what are you doing? Get back in line, okay, and shut your mouth. On the other hand, you saw the stat that we uh, showed in the beginning of the show. Even 55% of Republicans say that they have strong or very strong feelings that the, that the rich and the poor are in conflict, right? So if you want to get the voters, you've got to actually appeal to that. But if you want to get the money, you've got to appeal to your uh, money guys. How do they resolve that? I, I think, uh, just as you said, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. I mean, one of the things about Bain Capital, the, private equity is, is sort of a pure distillation of, of, of corporate American capitalism in, in which uh, profits come first and, you know, sort of women and children come last. And so, sometimes that works out well and sometimes it, it doesn't. Uh, and I think it's really, really troubling for all of the Republican candidates right now and also to some extent for Barack Obama. That, that nobody has really articulated a vision for, for what you do for everybody who sort of gets left behind. Mitt Romney likes to talk about creative destruction a lot. He's, he's always talking about, well, you know, if, if I wanted to create a lot of jobs, I could just, you know, ban tractors, then we need a whole lot more farm labor, things like that. Uh, well, well when, when you have these sort of creative processes, which oftentimes are actually, you know, good things, some people get left behind. And Mitt Romney has not said anything about what should be done about those people. And for, for Newt Gingrich, you know, one of the things he keeps talking about on the campaign trail is welfare reform that he did in the 90s with, with Bill Clinton. Well, welfare reform has been a total disaster. It just fundamentally has not worked during a recession. We have more poverty today than we did in 1996, uh, and yet we have much, much less actual aid going out to people than we did in 1996. So someone at some point has got to point out that there's a difference between being a capitalist and a, and a private equity entrepreneur uh, and, and actually running a country. and, and 
trying trying to trying to uh, to manage a functional society. Right, and, and look, it, I don't know how Romney thinks he's going to appeal to people uh, based on creating jobs when he's never created any jobs. He, you know, overall, did he create jobs at Bain? It's a, totally up to, you know, it's a good question, but nobody's really resolved the question, and in fact, he uh, cut a lot of jobs. That's why we're in this situation. When he was the governor of Massachusetts, uh, he was number 47 out of 50 states in job creation. This guy's a loser. He doesn't know how to create jobs. But can I just point out, I mean, you're talking about facts, but we're talking about Republicans. <laughs> oh, good. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> I know it's true. Like, for example, his big populist thing for Mitt Romney now is, I will index minimum wage to, uh, so that it goes up with inflation. He made the same exact promise in 2002, and then they gave him, they said, all right, great. Uh, increase the minimum wage $1.25. Here's the bill. He vetoed it. Yeah. He's a liar. All right. You get my drift on Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich. So we're going to move on to the second topic here. Do we have too much trust in our commanders? So it's interesting because the Republicans always say, uh, what am I going to do? I, I, I don't have a mind. I, I'm not a leader. I'm just going to ask the commanders, oh, commander, commander, what do I do? Well, it turns out a guy who's against that is General Martin Dempsey. He's only the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, right? Uh, so the top you know, uh, general that we have in the country. He said, quote, I find some of those articles about divergence or control of the generals to be kind of offensive to me, saying that we should need to have civilian control. It's very important, the idea that the commander should decide what the, uh, which direction to go in with foreign policy, he finds offensive. He also says, it will be our civilian leaders who make that decision, and I don't find that in any way to be a challenge to my manhood. Okay, I love that. So, uh, Tina, you know, it's in the rest of the press, bow down to the commanders. Is that the wrong way to go? Well, interesting enough, the only candidate who's ever brought this up, you know, in the, like, 300 debates that we've had so far, is John Huntsman. And he pointed out that if we would have listened to the commanders on the ground during Vietnam, we'd still be in Vietnam. And it was, like, one of those moments where you're like, did he really say that? Uh, but it's true. And people like Pat Buchanan still will, you know, uh, opine that we lost the Vietnam War because we left too soon. Right. Uh, now, it's a great point. At National Security Network just put something out on this. They said if we'd listened to the commanders uh, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, right. a we lot of us exactly. would be dead right now. We would not okay. be here. You got Thank it. God Kennedy didn't listen right. to those commanders.